Hey everyone, my name is Thomas Little, and I just want to do a few plugs before we get started on our video. You can reach me on Twitter at Thomas Little DBA. You can reach me on Facebook, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels. A lot of great, lot of great videos coming out uh, and alike. So let's go ahead and get started on our video. So I am going to do a demonstration on Resource Governor uh, with SQL Server. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through, create our users, create our resource pools, create our workload groups, and then we're going to do a demonstration on uh, watching the CPU usage using Performance Monitor drop when we have users start connecting to it. So let's jump in and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create two users. One's going to be an ETL user. Uh, that's going to generate some CPU usage. Uh, and then we're just going to have our regular user. Uh, and he's going to be connecting to our database. So, um, so let's create our users and make sure that uh, they are a part of the right group. Now I'm going to add them to the DB owners group of, of our database just for simplicity's sake. Um, this doesn't change any of the behavior on uh, resource pools and alike. So that's our first thing. The next thing we're going to do is actually create our resource pool. And this is where you actually define the CPU percentage and memory percentages and number of different parameters for your resource. In this particular example, you can see that I am setting the max CPU percentage to 5% and allowing the resources to use 100% of the available memory. So when we do that, we're going to go ahead and execute that. The next thing we need to do is actually create a workload group and map our workload group to our new resource pool that we created. And so the workload group is what we are going to assign to users that are going to log in. And how do we do that? Well, we do that through a classifier. And let me take this screen out. And what this classifier does is we assign it to resource governor and it basically acts like a mapping. It's basically a mapping function and that it says if a user logs in, then assign them to this workload group. Anything else, then just set them to the regular default group. Now, every user that logs in if resource governor isn't configured and alike will always be part of the default group. So again, you can see here that I am basically saying this particular user will be assigned this workload group. Okay. Now this has to be created in the master database. So something to keep in mind, oh, we already have it there. So we're already good. The next thing we need to do is assign the um, classifier that we created to resource governor and then reconfigure it. So that's just a simple alter statement. At this point, we haven't reconfigured uh, resource governor yet. So what, what I want to show you is what it looks like in Management Studio uh, using the Object Explorer. And what's important here is that you can see this reconfiguring pending. This is waiting for me to run this command. We've created everything and alike, uh, so now it needs to be reconfigured. It's disabled by default, so you have to enable it, uh, and you have to go through these procedures that I'm showing you in order to do that. But I just wanted to show you that because if you ever see the resource governor disabled or the reconfiguring pending there, it's waiting for this reconfigure command. Okay, So let's go ahead and run that. Don't have to run it twice, but apparently I had it in there, so not a big deal. Okay, our next next thing we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that our logins are assigned to the right resource uh, pools. So what we're going to do is we are going to log in with our ETL user on this query window. So we're opening up a new query window, logging in with our ETL user. Okay, and we can see here we're logged in. Let's open up another query window. And we're going to connect using our user account. Let me make sure I have the right password for this. We'll do that and connect. And let's choose our user here. Perfect. 
Okay, so we're connected to SQL Server using our SG user, and we're also connected using our SG ETL user. Good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run this select statement, which is basically going to tell us uh, the pools assigned to every person that's logged in. And what we want to pay attention to are these two right here. We could see our SG user is assigned to the default workload group, which is the default resource pool. But our ETL user is now assigned to our ETL workload group and our ETL resource pool. That's exactly what we expected. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull up performance monitor and we're going to monitor the CPU usage for each one of these workload groups. And we're going to see as we execute them, them start to get down to that 5% CPU, specifically our ETL user. Okay, so let's open up performance monitor. And we are going to monitor our counter for SQL Server workload groups. And there is a counter for this. Now I'm using SQL Server uh, 2016, just, a, just an FYI. So we are going to find our SQL Server workload group stats. We are going to do CPU usage. And we're going to do the ETL group and the default group. Again, because our user account is logging in using the default work group and our ETL user is using the ETL group. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna click OK, and we're gonna look at CPU uses. So nothing going on right now, everything's kind of minimal. Let's go back to perform or, um, Management Studio, and in our ETL, I have a procedure that generates, uh, generates uh, an enormous amount of CPU usage. I'm gonna run that for 300 seconds, so. Let's go ahead and execute that. If we go back to Performance Monitor, we can start to see that our ETL group is using up. I'm going to do a Control H here to highlight that. You can see now that we are using 50% of the CPU. Now, Tom, we set it to 5%. Why isn't it working at 5%? Well, that's because by default, it's going to use all the available CPU it can until the next workload group comes in and then you're going to see it level off. So that's the way, that's kind of the way Resource Governor works and I'll show you that. So let's go back to Management Studio and remember I had this SG user sign in with the default um, group. So if we go back here, remember SG user was default, default. Okay. Same query I'm going to run here and let's get back to Performance Monitor. Watch what you see. Now you've kind of see that our ETL group has leveled off to our 5%. You'll see here the last um, thing, the last uh, counter is 5%. You can see the dramatic drop. It took that second account coming in with another workload group to say, okay, I can't use the CPU anymore. I have another workload that has a higher priority, so it's going to use that. If you look here, now this is our default group. Thanks again everybody for watching this demo. Make sure you subscribe to us on Twitter at ThomasLittleDBA. Uh, you can also reach us on Facebook and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. A lot of great videos coming out.